What's the nature of your emergency? Welcome back to the Tactical Living Podcast. I'm your host, Ashley Walton, joined by Detective Walton. Glenn, how are you? I'm good. We had a very busy day yesterday hosting a golf tournament for the Mounted Patrol Unit, and it was an incredible turnout. There were so many people there, and it was also one of the hottest days of this year. And I think you and I are both completely spent today as we pre-record today's episode on a Sunday. I think the plan is to just try to recoup for the rest of today. Yeah, absolutely. But as we recoup, I wanted us today to explore the question, is the transgender movement causing increased child sex crimes? So just sit back, relax, and enjoy today's content. Now, as you listen to this, if you're not familiar, Clint works in a specialized unit of basically only this. And for the past couple of years... I've asked him what some of the trends and changes are that he has seen in terms of the increased child sex crime rates. And we can't help but wonder if the movement that's taken place over the past couple of years has had a tendency to exacerbate some of what we're seeing. Yeah, you know, I really think that it has increased in, in different ways. And, and I think the trans, the transgender movement is a factor involved with it. But I think even without that, we would see a, a slow trend of the increase because, you know, you have groups trying to normalize anything associated to like child sex trafficking or, or just uh, sexual abuse with minors or, or just general abuse. And I think with what we're noticing more is you see more victims who are transgender also being victimized where, say, it, you wouldn't notice it before. You're just seeing it come up, arise a lot more. Yeah, in a previous episode, we had talked about the modern birds and the bees conversation. And I believe that confused sexuality confused sexuality leads to really confused sexual morals and i also believe that that is a leading indicator into pedophile behavior and i'm saying that because we've all been young before and we can all remember that confusing time when sexuality started to we started to develop i guess our sexuality and the different ways that we learned the different ways that we maybe failed the different exposures that we've had. Some of them were deliberate. Some of them were maybe forced upon people. And nowadays, you know, I, I'm thinking back to that time and I couldn't have imagined seeing like the Jenners on TV and a, like a man deciding that he's a woman and then everything that's happened after that. Yeah, it's, it's, a whole different environment that we are living in nowadays with that. And I think with, with these movements, you're going to always have that equal and opposite reaction, especially with, and and I'm just going to use this for simplicity's sake is men who are predators saying they identify as a woman now, and they're going through that change and they're going into the women's bathroom and conducting sexual acts while in there because they're just looking for another avenue to be able to get their rockers off in, in that, in that sense of way. Yeah. And we also have the prisoners, right? (laughs) Like you can't tell me that just by nature, we have had such an uptick of male inmates now deciding that they're females And the transfers are taking place. And then we're seeing the repercussions of that. You know, whether we're talking about mass shootings, whether we're talking about increased suicide rates in our adolescents, the increased depressant medications that are being prescribed to the adolescents. It's insane to me that this is something that should have ever been allowed to take place when now we're having to pick up the pieces of essentially what the left has created, 
right? Because you have the two sides. It's always going to be the left and the right when it comes to issues like this. And a story that's coming up for me is we used to be friends with somebody who had boy after boy after boy after boy, and she wanted a girl so, so bad. And come time for her to have her last child and then being told that she wasn't going to be able to have any more children after that, or it wasn't a wise, healthy decision. All of a sudden, that that last son that she had was no longer a son and became a daughter. And we're not talking, you know, in teens. We're talking when this child was too young to even speak their first words and picking up a Barbie instead of picking up a, I don't know, a race car. I don't know. In my mind, it's like, okay, well, did you make the decision that this child was going to be a female? And the the decision was palpable. It was dramatic. It was, it was almost showy, right? It wasn't something that was a progression that I see with some people. It was, let's buy her dresses now instead of shopping in the boys section. Let's have everything in a feminine theme and let's be blatant about it. Let's go tell all the teachers. Let's go get the school involved. Let's go to every medical professional that we can so that we can start to create a trail. And these, these medical professionals, it's like they're, they're eating into it. I'm not sure if you're familiar with this, but there's coding that takes place in every medical procedure, every medical reason that we would go to see a doctor. For example, let's pretend for a second that you have refused to get the COVID vaccine that will be documented on your chart and coded in a particular way and being tracked and monitored in a particular way. And the flip side to having these codes is that's how we charge everything when it comes to billing in the medical field. And the amount of federal funding that's been provided for this type of care, this transgender care is astronomical. Why would you not want to partake in that when you have a patient who is suggesting that their child should now be turned into the opposite sex? And I think another big factor involved with that specifically is there's is a huge market for it right now. There's so much money from the medical aspect of it to be making. And that's a majority of these doctors don't care what the individual wants or who they really are, like anything to that nature. They say they see the dollar signs associated to it. It's gone so far the opposite way instead of actually just caring for the patient. And I'm not saying that with all doctors, but a large majority of them are that way. And I also think social media is that huge influence because I think, think growing up when we were, you know, five, 10 years old, transgenderism is not even something that would even have crossed our minds. Like, Yeah, and it's disgusting to me now because you have these schools that are taking these surveys and now they're rating more than 50% of all students as possibly being pansexual, bisexual, transgen- transgender. And I can't help but wonder, in particular with, with the younger children, you know, we, we most of us should know that if somebody deems themselves to be transsexual, then a trans person actually is suffering from gender dysmorphia. And we owe these people a great deal of sympathy. We owe these people a great deal of help and support. And yet we're doing all that we can to go against that. But in particular with the younger generation, as with the story that I shared, you know, nobody is talking about the child abuse factor that's taking place with the parents that are deciding that now they have a child of the opposite sex. I have seen videos of people who are having a child and they want to raise them in a gender neutral environment and give them a gender neutral identity and name. And it's sick. It's just a sick, sick place that we're living in as it pertains to this, because it's also stripping away the morals and the values that come later on when sexuality comes into play. It's causing so much confusion. And when you have that kind of confusion, it opens you up to this realm of predators to to very, very easily access that child. And that's the fault of the parents, in my opinion. It's a fault of the administration. It's a fault of the schools. It's a fault of the physicians. It's the fault of everybody who is in support of this. I mean, it's a really simple thing to look at. And, And as we're sitting here talking about this, I think of 
say you go to South America or to Africa and you find these tribes that have had very little communication with the outside world. Do you see, you know, kids or, or their tribe members or leaders going, Oh, do you, do you identify as a, a little girl or a little boy? It's not even a question that arises. In a lot of those tribes, they would probably be beheaded. Yeah. And it's that sick of a, you know, you, you're not strong enough to survive in our world. We most certainly wouldn't want to procreate you. Well, and, and not even going down that in, in that aspect, it's, it's not even a question. Like 99.9% of those times, like it's not even something that would arise is as after the mother gives birth to the child, it's not like, oh, well, what sex are they now? Like it's, it's not, oh, what are they going to grow up to be? Are they actually going to be a woman if they're a boy? And, and it's just, it's not even something that would arise for them. And you're right. You said it's so simple and it is because it's complete common sense. And I hope that we can use that common sense to protect our children. I hope that we understand the importance of doing this at a very young age because the risks as it pertains to the increase in child sex crimes it's astronomical when you see what the statistics are, and I encourage you to look that up on your own. So I hope you've gotten some value out of today's episode. If you have, do us a favor, drop a review, subscribe down below, and as always, know that I'm sending you a long, tight hug from my home to yours.